Welcome to another Dialogue on Africa. Thank you for joining us. This week on the show, we speak to three girls from northern Nigeria. It's a challenging environment and they share their views on growth and development in Africa. We get your views on the issues and we have Africa's top 10. You're watching the Africa Leadership Dialogues. I'm Julie Gishuru. This week on the show, we host three girls from northern Nigeria who share their challenges, including radicalization and insecurity. They talk about the traditional norms as well that frown on modern education and tell us their perspectives. Now, while the world's attention has been captured by the tragic abductions of schoolgirls by the Boko Haram, there are many other schoolgirls who are brave enough to still seek education and growth as well for themselves and their societies. They use their voices to empower girls across the globe. These girls are being supported by the Girl Effect Campaign, a movement that seeks to leverage the unique potential of adolescent girls to end poverty for themselves, their families, their communities, their countries and the world by making girls visible and changing their social and economic dynamics through the provision of specific, powerful and relevant resources. So let's get straight to the views of these three girl effect champions from northern Nigeria who are giving a voice to the voiceless. Their names, Selamotu, Fatuma and Aisha. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us on the African Leadership Dialogues. Let's start with why you are passionate about the Girl Declaration and why you engaged with this project. Salamu to your thoughts on this. I am passionate about the Girl Declaration because this is not just something people brought together. It's the girls that are saying this, using their voices themselves. So it's original and we know from this we get the goals, we get the solutions to all the problems that are affecting girls. Please, Aisha. Okay. I'm passionate about this because I feel I am part of the adolescent girls and I should push for it because not just me, others too have voices and I think our voices should be heard. So I should push. That's what's passionate. Thank you. And Fatuma? Um, what made me very passionate about the girl liberation is that I realized that I wasn't the only one that was going to through so many things. Girls around the world were also going to similar situations I was going to. So I was happy that it was this, this, uh, all these girl, this girls came together and had this declaration. I'm very glad that this declaration is going to be used to improve the life of we adolescent girls around the world. It's not just for my country. Which that's what makes me very passionate about the girl declaration. So let's talk about Africa in particular and, and the challenges that young girls face girls in general face in Africa. What have you experienced or seen in your own areas or communities yourselves? And, and therefore, what are you particularly passionate about? And, and this time, I'll start with you on that. Okay. Right, right now, rape is becoming very rampant. And um, rape is not just for women, older women now, adolescent girls, little girls. And that is a big challenge that is bedeviling my environment, my community, and um, where I come from. If a girl is raped, she can't really speak up. And even when she speaks up and she reports the, um, the case, nothing is really much done about it. Mostly she's blamed. She's like, why did you go to, why did you go to, um, to the man? Or maybe it was what you wore that caused it. Or they would tell her, just keep quiet. You know, this is going to affect your future. If people know that you've been raped, it's going to affect your married life and um, your future and your family, so you just have to keep quiet. And many of these girls have no one to talk to. They, they are all alone and traumatized, and this affects them mentally mm. and so, emotionally. So rape and the impacts of rape yes. a big issue. Aisha, your thoughts on this? Well, I'd like to say there are so many challenges. I'll just mention a few, like the issue of societal norms. 
like you know the men in some societies are always dominated they don't let the girls speak out they don't it's like infringing on their rights actually and then secondly i like to talk about violence some it's a big issue sometimes when there's violence some girls are scared to speak out or fight for whatever they want so i think violence and societal norms okay. are challenges okay so Men dominate conversations, they dominate the agenda, yes. women are sidelined, yes. and, and violence as well plays a role in ensuring that women feel like they can't stand up, yes. and, and, and just generally violence existing in society yes. is, is, is an issue. Um, Salam to please share your thoughts. I believe there are many challenges that African girls face, and most of the challenges come out from the fact that they are not recognized as citizens all their rights and privileges are taken away from them so they can't really speak out like you said even when they are raped they are not allowed to speak out even when they are forced to early marriage they are not they are not allowed to speak out so most times even when girls get married when they don't want to and they're very young some of them can't really pass through that stage of giving birth early and they die so there are basically many challenges that are intertwined and I believe that the girl declaration and the girl effect is trying to find solutions to this problem. So let's talk about the solutions. Just looking at the girl declaration, the different areas that it covers, we've got education, we've got health, safety, economic security, and citizenship. And I think you've touched on several of these already, but what do you see as practical solutions that we can apply for somebody who's watching right now and says, okay, maybe there's violence in society. How can we as citizens play a role in trying to change that? What are some of the simple things that you think can be done or are important um, to transform our societies? When you're trying to find solutions to problems, it doesn't mean you have to have all the financial security before you can help someone. Just basically help someone, even if you don't have all the money in the world, just a little help. That's the thing we need right now. And we need to give girls an identity to be able to speak up and to have equal rights like everyone has. Okay. Well, I think to find a solution to the problem, we first of all have to know what the problem is. And since we know what the problem is, I think we all should change our attitude towards the problem so that we can all work together we should have plans, we should push for laws and policies that will ensure that these, these um, that will ensure that our aims are achieved, our goals are achieved. Like Aisha said, some, we need to know what the problem is for us to find a solution to it. And we need to know that, okay, if we find solutions to it, who are we, will it affect, who, um, will it have any impact, negative impact on the people? Like um, in my society, if, like if they say we're going to bring a law, on um, this early marriage is going to be stopped. It's going to affect mostly them. Like if a girl now is going to speak up to her dad and say, I don't want to get married. It's my right to choose my husband. I want to go to school because it's my right. It's going to affect her mother because they have the father and the society are going to blame her mother. And her also is going to be, she's going to get punished. Immediately, she will just get married and or she will, they will just, um, her father will take her away. So I believe that, so, um, but if we are to find a solution, we have to think of the effect these solutions are going to uh, uh, are going to have on people. So when we find, when we think of the solution, um, when we think of the impact, the negative impact is going to have on these people, then we'll come up with a better solution instead of mm -hmm. just thinking that okay, girls need to know their rights and girls not come up and stand up against their parents. They're really going to have problem. But when we find this, uh, when we find the solution, we need to think about the effect. It's going to, the negative impact is going to happen on people. I think that's really going to help. Your, your p perspective is truly profound because you remind us that there is the reality that we live in communities, that we live in societies, and that in fact change is not an overnight thing, thing yes. that it is a process. And so how do we manage change? That is very powerful, and thank you for sharing that. As, as ladies, young ladies, one of the questions I really want to, to, to ask is, how do we as, as adults, as parents, mentors, guardians, best empower you to have self-confidence and feelings of self-worth? Because we do have many girls who 
don't have confidence, who don't feel their value, their true value, what do you think can be done to ensure that girls have a lasting feeling of confidence and self-worth? You have to give a listening ear. You have to listen to them. Like, if you listen to them, then they'll be able to speak, and you know what exactly it's in their minds. But a lot of girls don't have confidence because they feel, if I speak out, nobody will listen. Or if I speak out, I'll be punished. Or if I speak out, um, I'll be wrong. I'll be judged wrongly. But when you give them a listening ear, you show them that whatever they say, it's right. And there will be a solution. You only correct them and not just call them for it. I believe that will help. Give them a listening ear. That's very powerful. I remember when I was young, at the table as we had our meal, I would say something and nobody would listen. And if my brother would say it, everybody would say, that's very clever. <laughs> Does that happen to you? Yes. And you would think, but I just said it a few. So you're very right. In many ways, people don't hear what we say. Thank you. Well, Aisha. like she said, giving them a listening ear is part of it. Encouraging them. There are some that even if you try to listen, they can't just bring it out of them. So you have to find a way of pushing them. Just give them a notch. Maybe by bringing them together with other girls to talk, interact, giving them that space. From there, you can observe or you watch. And then I think like that, from that encouragement, you'll be able to become self-confident and you have self-worth. Thank you. I believe that um, girls need to have mentors or like role models, someone they look up to in their society, someone that is close to them. You know, when you have, um, I believe that like, um, I have someone I look up to. Whenever I have a problem or I need something, like, it's on my mind, and I feel maybe if I speak out at home, nobody really listens to me, or even if I'm listening to, nothing will be done about it. You know, and, like, if I talk to my mentor or my role model, you know, she can, like, come and speak to my parents, you know, because she's an adult. They'll see things that happen in her own perspective. Well, even though it's my idea, but, you know, but they're going to agree with her. So I believe that people in society need to mentor many girls. You don't have to be related to a girl to be her mentor. But um, if, you, if there are many mentors in the society, many girls, I think, won't be in so much trouble, you know, because some girls, they don't really, like, seek for trouble themselves, but because they don't have anybody to talk to, so nobody listens to what they are, so they do things that end up making them, uh, they do things that end up, been a problem for them but you know when they speak out when they speak to someone before they do anything you know they get advice and stuff like and that it's going them. to help yes yeah, someone to guide them it's very good and yeah. i think societies need to encourage us then it's going, it's going to help a lot stay with the africa leadership dialogues the boys say that in Africa today there's a problem because there's so much attention going to the girl child, nobody cares about the boy child anymore. What would you say if, if someone says that, you know, for instance, there's too much focus on the girl? What would you say to the men or the boys who feel concerned that this happens at the expense of the boys? Uh, let me start with you in the middle, Aisha. Well, let's start with, I will tell that person, I don't think that is the case. Because too much power has been given to the men. So that's why sometimes the girls or the women are considered as to be her sex. So I think it is now time for us to focus more on the girls. Enough has been given to the boys, or maybe you can say, you can just give them little more. But I think now we should really have to focus on the girls because they've been left out in the past. To, to just uplift them, you're yes, saying? Yes, to just bring the them so that even if they are not on the same level, mm. they can be moving at the same pace. So that some people will be left behind. Okay. When you just immediately you just asked this question, something that came up to my uh, to my head. I just remembered something that happened at, at home. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time uh, the monthly allowance. My dad okay every month our dad gives us monthly allowance. So my brother don't realize that mine was higher than his. My money was much more than he and he asked. Why should she be given more money? I'm older than her, and my dad told him that. She's a girl, she has more needs than you do, and you have better opportunities than she does. He said, you might go, both of you might go to a place with, um, to get a work, to look for work, but because she's a girl, she might be denied, but you, you will get a job. And she, she has to come back and she needs money, and he said, it's not good for a female to seek 
for help outside the mm. home. So he said it's very dangerous for a girl to seek for assistance outside the home. So that's why we need to give her more money, not because she's better than you or anything, but because you have better opportunities than she does. So he told him that he shouldn't feel bad about it. He told him that someday, he will, when he becomes a father, he's going to understand. He understand. So I need <laughs> all these guys out there, they shouldn't feel bad. It's not because our parents love us more, more, more than they do, just mm -hmm. that now our parents have realized that a girl needs better attention because a girl who doesn't have attention might do things that are not very, very wise. So now that's why I think now parents are focusing more attention on a girl. Right, and then with all the exploitation she out there, can be easily exploited. Exactly. It's very noble, and, and that's an amazing example there. Selamucho, what do you think about Well, this? if you look at a girl and a boy, from the beginning, a girl's life is more challenging than a guy's because physically, she undergoes more rapid changes than a boy. Emotionally, psychologically, all these um, sectors you look at, she has more challenges than a boy. So as of now, a girl is like this and guys are like this. Different levels. Yes. And so we have to bring the girls at this so that there will be general development. So I believe that concentrating on girls now is not a bad thing. We're just trying to balance the equation so there will be the generational development. Let's talk about your dreams and your vision for the future. Do you hope to be part of the transformation of Africa? I should have start with you. Even if I don't want to be part of that transformation, I'm not being honest to myself. I'm, a, I'm an adolescent girl. I have to be part of that transformation. It will affect me one way or the other. So it is that transformation that will help me to become a better, a better mother, a better woman in my career, and a better woman in helping the, entire, the whole society. So having said that, what would you say to girls who say, look, I'm not interested in that. I just want to you know, get the easy way out, whatever it is, even if it means, you know, um, marrying young or you know i don't have opportunity a lot of girls give up early give up their dreams give up their hopes to start a business or you know and and, and start to settle for other things um so what advice would you give them aisha before i come to the rest well i'll just tell them let's give up easily because there's a whole world out there there's so much waiting for them they should, they should just wait to explore they shouldn't just um they shouldn't just give up. There's so much more, and they have all the support. You know. okay. yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up. Your thoughts, Fatima? Will you be part of the transformation of Africa? What is your dream and vision for your future? I have to be part of this transformation, not just for myself, but for the future of many girls coming. So I need to, for us to have a better tomorrow for us, because if I'm not part of this um, transformation, then what am I fighting for? There's no point to fight for something when you're not going to be active in it. So I need to fight for it for the better tomorrow of many girls out there. Because um, in February, I work with so many girls. And um, I realized that sometimes I used to think, oh, I have so many problems. How can I achieve this? How can I? I don't have opportunity. But when I sat down with, when I sat down with them, we talked one on one, I got to realize, oh, I'm in semi heaven, you know. So mm -hmm. even if I don't want to do it for myself, there are many girls out there who really, really need this transformation agenda so that they will have a better future because many of these girls have dreams. To be honest with you, most of the girls I've known, adolescent girls, most of them don't want, don't want to just marry. Now girls want to be doctors, they want to be lawyers, mm -hmm. they want to be equal with men. It's not because it's to overpower men, but no, they just want to be, you know, have the rights a guy, a man has. Or a better future because many women just come to realize that if I marry, I'm going to have kids someday, and um, if my husband is not responsible, I'm in, I'm in going to be in problem, and my kids are also going to be in problem. So I need to work ahead. So many girls have a dream. So if they can be part of the transformation, I am an ambassador for them. So I need to make sure that this transformation is successful. It happens. It happens. Yes. What career do you want to go into? Um, I want to be a philanthropist, but I know that's not going to be easy, so um, I'm studying to be a journalist. So um, I hope that um, with, the, with the education I have and with the profession I've chosen, 
I believe that um, it's going to help, even though I know that I, I don't really have the money, but... Well, you can get there. You yes, I know I'm going there. to get there, but I believe that with what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. it's going to help a lot of girls because the girls I will, I've spoken to, many of them are into, they are very, very into information. Some of them through Twitter, some of them through radio, some of them through the TV, so they are very, very current. So many mm -hmm. of these girls, they listen to um, programs that are very inspirational. So I believe that um, even through, by, if I will, end up if I'm if I'm lucky I end up being in a I end up being a very good reporter I'll make sure that uh, I see things or I do things that are going to help a lot of girls because many girls just want someone to hear them out right. someone to just support them someone to give them a listening ear so if I can have a program that girls can come in and see what's going on in their life or girls who need advice I think it uh, provides it's, a platform for exactly them. fantastic so I think it's going to be good share your thoughts on that. What do you want to achieve in life? What's your career direction? And will you continue to be part of the transformation? Um, actually, I won't miss this transformation for anything. I'm already a part of it. And what's left now is for me to put other girls into this transformation, to bring them in and make sure we all develop together as adolescent girls. And for the girls out there who are giving up I will tell them that nothing good comes easy. There are challenges in life, and when you face them, you find out that you come out the best. And there's a saying that the brightest stars shine in the darkest nights. So I advise them to just stay strong, and if there's a way I could give my voice out to them, if there's a way they could continue to hear me, even if it's through the media, I'll always be there to give my voice to them. It's a beautiful saying, the brightest stars shine in the darkest nights. Thank you for sharing that. We're almost at the close, and I'm going to ask each of you to look straight into the camera and deliver your message to Africa. But I want you to speak to both African boys and girls on how you can all, because now I'm the older generation, and while I want to play a role too, I want you specifically to tell the young people how you can all play a role in transforming Africa and really growing the story of Africa rising. I'm an adolescent girl, and you you might be an adolescent girl or an adolescent boy. I just want you to know that we have the same mentality. We think the same. You should never feel different. And if we believe in ourselves and we put these thoughts together, all these things, I know the things, you, the ambitions you have, you might think it's for you alone, nobody feels. I feel what you feel, and if we can come together, that will achieve so much. And I just want you to know that you're never, you're never alone, and we're all together in this. Thank you, Thank you so much, Aisha. Well, I'd just like to say to the adolescent boys and girls out there, to just hold on tight. There's something big coming. It's just hang on. Although it's, I know it's going to take a little bit of time, but with them putting in a positive attitude towards it and changing their mindset, we're all going to achieve what we want. I would like to tell the adolescent girls and boys that we need to rewrite our story. We need to change history. And um, we, we can't do it alone. We need to come together to do it. And I want them to know that we are all going through the same thing, no matter the country we are in. We are not alone and we need to come together. I know it's not going to be easy for us to, I know many of us are not going to be, cannot come together, but those around us, we can come together, share our thoughts, share an idea, our ideas to have a better Africa. Thank you all so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank and you. I wish you, very you much. all the best in all your future Thank endeavors. You very much. Thank, you. Thank you very much. We salute these girls for their bravery and their vision and we wish them all the best in the future. Now time for your views on the issues. This week we asked you, what practical solutions can we adopt across Africa to ensure social parity and inclusion? Anwai Dera says, 
sports, music and dance festival, joints and trade do seem to equalize the world. Just take a look at what World Cup does. We should put aside a week or day when prejudice takes a back seat and we enjoy ourselves as one people. Bert Robert says, Establish standards that are uniform across the board such that everyone has equal opportunities regardless of social status. Hi, my name is Livoy Alan and I am watching Africa Leadership Dialogues from Ongata Rongai. The practical solutions that we can adopt across Africa to ensure social parity and inclusion are strengthen opportunities for post-primary education for boys and girls, eliminate gender inequality in employment by closing gender gaps and constitute laws that cater for equal representation in parliament and government. In order for this to be achieved, there has to be a leadership and political will. To join our conversation, go to our G Plus page, Africa Leadership Dialogues, on Facebook, Africa Leadership Dialogues, on Twitter, at Africa LD, and on WhatsApp, send your video comments to plus 254-715-816-033. And now, to Africa's Top 10. This week on Africa's Top 10, we feature the Global Gender Gap Index latest rankings according to the World Economic Forum. The Global Gender Gap Index is a framework of capturing the magnitude and scope of gender-based disparities and tracking their progress. The index benchmarks national gender gaps on economic, political, education and health criteria and provides country rankings that allow for effective comparisons across regions and income groups over time. Starting us off at number 10 is Senegal. The country has a gender gap score of 0.6929 and is ranked 67th globally. Coming in at number 9 is Tanzania with a global ranking of 66 and a gender gap score of 0.6928. At number 8 is Madagascar. It's ranked 56th globally with a gender gap score of 0.7016. Uganda comes in at number 7 with a gender gap score of 0.7086 and is ranked at position 46 globally. Positioned at number 6 is Namibia with a gender gap score of 0.7094 and a global ranking of 44. Slotted in at number 5 is Malawi with a gender gap score of 0.7139 and is ranked 39th globally. Taking the number 4 spot is Mozambique, which is ranked 26th globally with a gender gap score of 0.7349. Burundi comes in at number 3 with a gender gap score of 0.7397 and is ranked 22nd globally. At number 2 is South Africa with a gender gap score of 0.7510 and is ranked at position 17 globally. And at number one this week is Lesotho with a gender gap score of 0.7530 and a global ranking of 16. And that's Africa's top 10 this week. Time now to end the show for you. We hope it's been informative. We end with a proverb from the Yoruba. What you give, you get. 10 times over. The question is, what are we giving? Are we contributing towards a good society or a destructive one? Because whatever we're putting in, we'll certainly get back. Blessings to you and blessings to 